Amen. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that we can share your word with your children. Father, each of us is on a journey of life wherever we may find ourselves from baby to a hundred, we are still running this race and we want to find ourselves before you. We ask that as we empty ourselves that you would fill us with all that we need to go on. And as we get ourselves on the mark, ready, set to go to what you have called us to do and where you have called us to be, we ask your blessings no one forevermore. Amen and amen. All right. We would have had a lovely eight weeks so far, children, correct? And it seems that if school is still coming faster, we're still not ready for school. A lot of us still not ready for school. Imagine just one more week, and then we are entering into a new class, a new school, and the fears, and the anxiety, and the uncertainty of what we will encounter seems to weigh us down. We wonder what next. We wonder when we go to school, are we still going to get pressure from other children? Will they get school meals? Will they get enough money to spend? When children come to school for $20 and they only have five, who is going to pressure me? And there is so many things that goes through our minds as we enter into school for a new school term. However, I want to encourage you this morning, just for a short while. And even though I will be speaking mostly to the children, I want us as adults to also understand that this journey in life, we are also asked to be prepared for whatever comes our way. So my topic this morning is on your mark, get set, and go. On your mark, get set, go. Anybody here like running, athletics, even to watch it? None of y'all little children? You don't like sports? Right. You like sports? You like cricket? All right. Any adults like sports? We just come out of, of, of the Olympics. All right, I see, I see some hands up. And even though they might have boxing and gymnastics and that sort of thing, when it comes to the running, we are usually glued to our television. Even at work, the bosses be walking around and saying, um, we ain't got nothing to do. Because somebody, that's be calling somebody, a race coming. So we are all ready to see who is going to play us, especially if it's somebody from Caribbean. Caribbean first, then anybody else, but the states. Anybody can win different from people from the United States. And we just get hauling if it is our own. I tell you, nice. We be excited, we be excited. And even at school, we all are in different houses at school. Sometimes it bothers us when the game's teacher come and asks us to run in a race. I can't run. We need to serve me. I've been at school, so I know all the excuses. They sound real hard, especially now. They sound real, real hard. I don't want to run in a race. Mom, could I be excused? My teacher, my mommy sent a letter, well, I can't participate in sports. And I don't want you to be like me. I don't want you to be like me. We get a friend to jot down a letter for you fast. And somebody to forge and right where you can't go sports. That's how you're hoping nobody don't call your parent. Because your parents, they send a letter. But in this journey called life, back to school, we all have to do it. We all have to participate. 
So even though some of you may not, may not like sports, the athletics, you all go out at some point and see racing being done. So we see the children are set and the, and the person saying, on your mark, get set, go. We see that. And we hear that for ourselves, yes? We're having conversation, yes? Talk to me, talk to me, yes? Hannah and Jania, yes, we see that? Right. So, these children put themselves in position, but they had to prepare. They had to prepare at some point. Kaden okay, just don't go and play cricket and decide that he can get up one morning and go and score 99 or 50 or 100. He goes to practice. He prepares. He, he, he get himself in order. He get his back ready. He get his shoes organized so that he don't forget anything at home. So as we prepare for back to school, we want you to get your minds ready. We want you to get your thoughts prepared. We want anxiety. It will come, but we want you to dispel it. We want that when it begins to come, you say to yourself, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Even though I'm not sure, and we all know, if I'm going to let my math teacher, if I'm going to let my English teacher, you know what? I'm going to learn because I have to do my best. I want to do my best. I want that at the end of my school term, I can hear, well done. Likewise, we as adults, we have to decide that we will do our best. That at the end of our journey, we hear, well done. So we prepare ourselves. We get our minds ready. We get our thoughts ready. I believe by now we already know what shoes we're wearing. If we get a new bike for school, if we want to press our new farms on this Sunday or join the course of the week because we really don't want to be too sweaty. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to be bothered. Who's going to drop us to school? Oh, Lord, I got to walk in Charo Bridge and catch the bus. And the bus don't come on time. I got to leave form at 7 o'clock, which means, oh, no, I got to begin getting up a little earlier and not at 10.30. So I can't be put my phone to all 12 o'clock the night or when my auntie get up at 2 o'clock, I flick over my phone because I don't want you to see the light for my phone. Sounds familiar? Right. So all this week, we're going to be preparing ourselves. This is the week to prepare yourself for back to school. So this is the week of on your mark. On your mark. So we know that when the, the, the children that come to school last term, that cause us to behave bad because they were at school, we know that now we are going into another class, regardless of if they are at school or not, we will behave. Because we don't want to get sent home. We don't want that our parents have to come to the school to say that we misbehave because we don't want lashes. Or for some of you that don't get lashes, we don't want to be punished. We don't want that when our friends have parties, we cannot go because we misbehave at school. Agree? Right. Or back in our days, what usually would happen is we would get ready to go to a party Right, Pam? And we were here, take off them clothes. That time the friends outside waiting for me to go to the party or to the fair. And we fussy because we're making plans for this fair. We're ready to go to this fair. And nothing was said during the week, but we were told to wash the dishes. And we vet, so we didn't wash the dishes. We got one late from school. But there's a school fair coming up. And we excited. And we dressed. And mommy pressed the clothes too, you know. I put them there. And then we put them on, you hear. Look outside and tell them you ain't coming. You know how bad you will feel? Imagine. Imagine you want to go to the movies, Chelsea. And you ready. So you got plans. You, John, Hania, and Hazaria, we're not going to watch this movie before back to school. Following me? 
So it's Sister Gazel got the other tree and them outside blowing for you by your granny. But your mommy already called granny and said, don't let Chelsea left there. Tell me how you're going to feel. Talk to me. Very bad. Hey, hey, tell me what else. You're going to only feel bad what can happen. You're going to start to cry. Huh? You'll be vexed. Yes. What about you, John? You'll be vexed too. And I know, I know today, young people, don't take that, I know. And we vex, we face Ben, and I'm talking, don't ask me nothing. And then when I come talking, because I don't want one to say I rude, I answer him yes. No. And I grab my bed and shut my door. I all going through my mind, I say, my mommy's make me sick. Look, this body just get to go to this place, and this boy's get to go to that place, and I standing in the house, like if it's a little girl. Sound familiar? Sound familiar? Yes, we've been there, we've been there. Likewise as us as adults. We might be praying to God for something. We've been disobedient. We have been disobedient. God has asked us to do something. And we refuse to do it. So then when God begins to punish us, to show us why he's not, we want to get to the window. But we are wondering why we are stuck here. Because we haven't done what God asked us to do here. So we can't get there. And I'm wondering, why is Celia, why is Celia all out there? Why is Brother Wayne and Dumbo Pavilion? Why well, don't they Pavilion too? But God asked me to do something and I do it. I, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. Or, they got a cricket match. And you're excited to go to cricket. And your father takes you to cricket. But you're playing, you're sitting down in the pavilion. That he already tell the coach he ain't playing today. But you're going to cricket. And you can imagine watching your, your team getting beat. And you know that if you had just gone out there to bat, you could score a good 50 and beat St. George. Tell me how you would feel in Pavilion. Tell me, Mickey. Bad. All right. The carry, you're supposed to go football. Auntie Celia put out your, your boots and everything. But when the coach come down to carry the football, you hear Auntie Celia bung and gone at the door. They carry any football today. How would you feel? Everybody can feel bad. All right. I would feel bad too. I would feel real bad. I'd be real upset. I'd be vexed. I'd be, uh, I would try. I would try to slam the doors. Because you were here, you got to break off that. But when everybody them doors in here, you know what I'm saying? And then you hear keep that bedroom door open. That's how you walk, close the door. Because you're vexing. And we parents know, when we get the children vexed, the first thing we just do every minute is call the name. Are you telling us? We just try to got conversation. The crying, they say, we are you crying for? You want something to cry for? Tell me what you crying for. You want something to cry for. You beat the children and ask them with a crayon for. I tell you guys? Right. So I want us to understand that we as adults, we've been there. But because that we are on the mark ready for back to school, I want to encourage you to be a leader. Be a leader. Don't be a follower. Set aside time to study. Set aside time to play because you still need the element of playing to be holistic, to be a well-rounded child. I want you to set aside, you see, when I get home at 5 o'clock because of how the buses just run or how traffic does be, I go on to study at least for half an hour. I want you also to remember, teachers don't always set homework. But you have homework every day. There is something that was taught at school that you do not understand. You do not know. It happens also to us as adults. We may read a passage of scripture. We need to go over it. We need to go over it and over it and apply it to our lives. As we get so you have your books, you already set time out, plan, this is what you can do when I go to school, how we can set my timetable, this is my 
time to study. So regardless of who called me, I am going to study at this particular time. So we get set. Get a set, we get up, we pray to God, we ask God to go before us. Chelsea did a lovely prayer just now, asking God that we will remain, you will remain as children, operating like children, be slow to answer sometimes, be slow to anger. Understand you need guidance, understand that what the teachers have is what you need. Don't get me wrong, I understand they have teachers that come to school with bad attitudes. However, however, do not let that teacher attitude cause you to respond the same way. Because as a child, you will be in the wrong. Take your place, take your mark. You don't have, there's not everything you need to respond to. We might need to adjust or attitudes. Sometimes you might not even say anything. But your body language says it all. We know at times when you're upset. We know when you're happy. We know when you're pleased. We know when things are going the way you want them to go. So we are setting up ourselves that we are examining ourselves to see, you know what, last year, I did some things that, looking back, I really shouldn't have done or shouldn't have said. So this year, I am going to try to be better. It is a trend. It's a, it's a mindset we're going to try. Some days you will fail. Some days you will not get it all correct. But we are pleased when you try. When you begin to say, well, I did this, but this year I can do better. And you begin to tell yourself, I am going to do better. Continue to speak it in your mind. I must do better. I must be the best version of who God wants me to be. Right? Okay. Still with me? All right. I lost somebody yet. All right. So, we have the Holy Spirit willing to help us. If you are in a natural race, remember there are some races that might be a dash, might be a 100 meter, might be a 200, might be a marathon, might even be a relay, where you have to depend on somebody else. And usually, in this journey called life, we have to depend on somebody else to pass the baton correctly. So then we go back to the natural racing. And I can see some different colors. So we got white house, red house, yellow house, green house, and blue house, and purple house. White house supposed to pass the baton to who? The person in which house? White. So imagine the person in purple house in white, lane, white, white house lane. Tell me what can happen, pretty pastor. Talk to me, talk to me. What can happen? Confusion. All right. Talia, you're an athlete. So you tell me, you're supposed to pass the baton to, to, to I know it's January time, to Shinako. Somehow, you're supposed to be in lane, lane six, and you've gone in lane eight. Shinako in lane six, waiting patiently for you for the baton. Tell me what gonna happen. Say again. Say hard. You're gonna pass the baton to the wrong person. This happens in life. Because there is somebody that is waiting for us to pass on our faith. There is somebody that is waiting for us in the correct lane correct position, but because we are not listening, we go in the wrong lane. We don't follow instructions. That's another thing. We go back to school. We have to do. Pay attention and listen to instructions. If we are unclear of what the teacher has said or the person in authority 
Nothing is wrong in going to ask. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm not sure what it is I'm supposed to do. It does not mean that you are foolish. It means that you're wise. Because you want to know. You want to be better. You are only foolish if you don't know and you behave like you know and you do the wrong thing. Yes? Good. So, even you, if you have to go and ask the teacher six times and the teacher begin to get annoyed, say, ma'am, I'm sorry to confuse you, or sir, I'm sorry to confuse you, but I don't understand. Can you explain? And even though they might be upset, trust me, I am almost sure that they will say, look, let me tell them again, so that will stop confusing me, because I want them to get it right. Understand? So even though they might do it in a bad way, you, you get it for yourself. You try to understand. You might even have to ask one of the students next to you. You understand? And, and not join class, because I don't want you to get put out of class. But you, you understand? When mom give you this homework, what it really is we need to do? Children, you just be on your tablets, your phones, even at church. All the time. So there's nothing wrong in sending a, a message to one of your friends and asking them, we can study together because I really understand this concept so good. I understand what mom was saying so good. So I want some help. And you might be surprised that they also needed help in that particular area. I remembered teacher saying they know foolish questions. And you know you will ask a question at school. And everybody in class will laugh. But you know where they laugh? But I can guess where they laugh. Because then they know the answer either. And they was just glad that somebody else, they're brave enough to ask the question. So they want you to sound foolish, to look foolish. But that time they're looking and they're waiting for the same answer. So be a leader. Be the one to take a stand. To say it must make sense to me. I must make a difference. I know that I come from the school. I know that mommy, daddy, granny, somebody keep praying for me. And that's what the church's job is. To cover you in prayer as you go back to school. As you get yourself ready for school. Because we know there are those children out there that nobody pray for that nobody covers, that nobody says to them on mornings, I love you. There's some homes that children come from and they are scared to go back in on evenings. They are anxious to get to school because of the turmoil and the trouble that they see at school, at home, sorry. I want that as you go, that you do not compare yourself to anybody. I want that as you go, that you find your personal strengths and your personal weaknesses. There are strengths and weaknesses in each of us. I want that as you go, that you understand it is more important to be, to do your best than to be the best. I understand that. I want you to understand it is more important to do your best. Your best is not going to be my best. Your best is not going to be the person next to you back. Your, your best. But once it is your best, it is good enough. Get me? Still with me? Likewise, we God expects us to do our best. I cannot sing. I know that's my personal weakness. I won't try. Different if I'm the host. I mean, I mean, I might try at work, and then somebody will say something, and then they will remember. Many girl, you can't be doing that. You can't confuse the office. You know what I'm saying? So there's some things that might not that you know you are not good at. To live, she's good at running. 
Hazaria at dancing. Chelsea just, she has an excellent memory, which she retain. It's a lot of poems and that sort of thing. Jana Hani in it. Will I hear them singing this morning? And they sounded good. They sounded good. So we continue to encourage you. We got boys that might be good at football, boys good at cricket. We got boys that might be good at building things, girls also at building things. There are things you are good at. We want that those things that you are good at, that you continue to develop them. You might be good at mathematics, but not at English. So we expect that when the averages come out, that math is so high, that when they divide the subjects, that you still range within the high mark. Follow me? Do not settle for 30% of any subject if you can give 70%. However, if you can only give 30%, we are not looking for 70, but we expect 30. We don't expect 28. Because your best is 30%. With me? Still with me? Still with me, sweet girl. Good. So, as we continue to go, there are things that I want you to do as you go. I want you to look for that student that somehow seems to be always by themselves, that somehow seems to be always getting picked at, that somehow seems to be always sad. Try to have conversation. Try to befriend them. Try to understand how you can help. Let your light shine, being an example to these children. We have children that are going into new schools, and because you're coming from primary school into secondary school, any other children that do the 11 plus, different from Kida, that here? No? You, you did 11 plus also? Right. So as you go into a new school, the atmosphere is going to be different. There are going to be thousands of children, different teachers to teach. You're accustomed that one teacher in your class teaching a subject or maybe two. But then you have a teacher for mathematics, a teacher for English, a teacher for Spanish, teacher for French, teacher for geography, teacher for PE, teacher for science, teacher for social study, teacher for history. Any other subjects I may say? Oh, there's a new subject that I see almost every child that I see doing it does get 100%. I'm already sure it is robotics, something. Pardon? Something. So imagine there are going to be teachers for all of these subjects, and you have to move from one class something to another class, uh, 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 like the technical drawing room or the home room. And you lost and confused. There's nothing wrong for asking for direction. Nothing wrong in asking somebody, can you show me where to get to? You understand? I remember going to school, and I was the only person up here that went to school at LRC at that time, at that age. And there was a young lady that knows to take me to school sometimes that was bigger than I. But I had hard ears. And, I, and the girl ready to left school, and I didn't ready. And I come to town and got lost. I know when I can get lost in town. Not now. Not to their children. But I remember getting off in the bus in the Lower Green bus stand. That's done by courts. I'm finding myself all the way down part of Jackson Vans just come now. I supposed to be up in the Fairchild Street bus stand, and I all down there ain't got a clue. Can't find Nelson stick up in town. I know a part to find Nelson. When I understand, and I was in both second form or first form or something. Bigger, powerful, real, real powerful. And they know how to get home. Can't get home. I was at primary school. I went to school at Belmont. And I caught the wrong bus to get home. And because the drivers at that time knew who would catch the bus, the bus had marked school. The man said to me, the bus is going to college Savannah. So get off in Salter's Road 
and wait for the bus. Well, you know, I get off in Sauter's Road and they wait for the bus. And that's about 3.30, 4 o'clock the evening. Not understanding, I could walk from Sauter's Road home. It went 7 o'clock, my mother and then looking for me. Because I still uh, down, down the road waiting for a bus. Would that be man tell me? Don't we tell me? The driver tell me get off and wait for a bus and every bus that can't be full. Oh, what is that? Foolishness. But in this day and age, Jamaya, you know how to get to town. If, if mommy carry you town, you know how to get, you know what bus to catch you come home? I don't understand what I mean. You know what bus to get home? You see, you're going to know we can catch flat rock bus or greens bus. We ain't gonna catch it by myself because I know that me ain't left you. She might take both it, but she ain't left you. But I know you're gonna get lost. You know how to walk from Charo Bridge home, though. You know how to walk from a pipe primary school home by yourself. Who does bring you home? Hmm? All right, Auntie Jalisa gonna start you from coming for you. <laughs> so you can walk down the road. You powerful. But we don't understand what I'm saying. So there are things in life that will confuse us as you go back to school. As you navigate life, as we as adults even navigate life, there are things that will confuse us if we don't know for ourselves. But I want that as you go back to school, we begin to get better results. We begin to get great results. We at Salters will not be settling for anything less than your best. We want to show off. We want to rejoice with you. When you make mistakes and you cry, we want to cry with you. But crying with you, we also want to encourage you to get up and go again. When we see the races, there are people, especially with parents, when we, not, we got children running, there are people along the way that is be keeping enough noise. Just telling the children, run, 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 run. Are we, just, are we not? We can run, but the children start at the at the starters line. Are we, <coughs> are we at the fashion line with children? Are we running fast, just like the children? But as we to run a race tomorrow, we ain't able. I ain't know but one <coughs> We then those are the things that we do, right, Marika and Ajerka? That when we running, mommy and then just be keeping enough noise. Right, good. Them is the things that we do. So we are in this race with you. We are willing, right to Leah? This is the same thing I was talking about. When teacher is talking, we cannot afford to be talking, we'll be distracted. We expect your best, which means you must pay attention. I'll use this last analogy. There was a man that was sleeping in church and the pastor says something pertaining to, if you can put in, I remember this one. This is not the one I wanted. A hundred dollars, stand up. He only hears stand up and he jump up. So the usher went for the hundred dollars and he asked, what happened to everybody sitting down and they stand up? That's because he wasn't paying attention. So he had to keep his vote and pay the church a hundred dollars. You understand? So if you go to school and you play the fool and not pay attention, the teacher might say something and you might raise your hand, not understanding. The teacher might ask, who is a dummy? And you have up in the ear. You must pay attention. I want you to listen. I want you to be focused. I want that. Remember, don't care what happened. If you are uncertain, ask questions. Come home and ask. We got past teachers, we got past students, we got all sorts of things that sort of that you might not know, and somebody might be able to help you. Yes? So we, we, we are in a position where if we don't know, we are willing to answer. Hmm. We're willing to ask for help. Are we willing to ask for help? I wonder why the children are not willing to ask us for help. Don't ask me if I think that I get lost with her. But I ain't lost with her, no one know. I can find home with my Aisha. 
I don't know. But we are willing, and we ask that you ask for help. You ask for help at school. You ask for help home. All right? So, on your mark, get set, go. We are ready to go back to school with the help of the Holy Spirit to do the best that we can. Yes? Yes, please? Yes, please. All right, let's stand. Only Sunday school children. Only the back to school children. Let's stand. Let's stand. All back to school children, even those in the back that they come up. Stand. All right. So we have one, two, three. About 20 children at present today. Because these 20 children are standing, these represent the future of our church. They represent the future of our country. They represent us. So because I can see you, I want all of you to turn around because I want the church to see you. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. I want the church to see you. I saw Gabby early. Gabby somewhere there, so Gabby might meet 21. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, these children are the ones that God has loaned to us. These are our responsibility. These are the ones we have, not ought to. These are the ones we have to cover in this year, 2024 to 2025, as they get ready to enter a new school year, as they get ready to face the challenges of school. Yes? These are them. I am not going to ask, because I know, before the shadow of a doubt, all the hands will go up. So because I know that, I don't need to ask. So since they are our responsibility, you might not know them by name, but we have 21 children to take before God every day from, 20, from now until the new school year. Next school year, we will have more to cover. So this school year, we have approximately 30 children, if my mind serves me right, to cover. So even if you say God, the 30 children that represent Salters in our community, we are covering. You don't need to call the names. But I give them to us. These are ours as we get them ready for back to school. Father in God, we place these children in your hand. We thank you, God, for every single one of them. We thank you, God, for bringing back to their remembrance all that they would learn, all that they would do. We ask that you would strengthen them. Father, we build a hedge around them. We ask, oh God, that the angels that encamp around them would continue from day to day to be their guide. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would guide them into all truth as your word declared. We ask, oh God that they would indeed be leaders, that they would be the ones to set the example. It don't matter what position in the race they may be in, they will set the examples, they will listen, and they will be obedient. They will choose between good and evil. And God, that can only be done through you. So God, even as they prepare for school, we ask, Father, that you will prepare them for life, that they will come to know you as their personal Savior, understanding that in you, they have everything. And because of you, they have the strength to overcome every challenge that will come. They have the strength to rejoice when it's time to rejoice. They have the strength to cry when it's time to cry. But God, everything is found in you. And Father, I want to thank you for the adults that will be covering them. We want to thank you for grandparents. We want to thank you for godparents. We want to thank you for mothers, fathers, uncles, aunts, sisters, cousins that will cover them in their praise. Father, we want to thank you because this is going to be an excellent year for them. And we give you all the honor and all the glory. Amen.